Hey guys, that's it here. With about a week and a half remaining to the release of Reaper of Souls, I decided to set a challenge for myself, and that would be to construct an arcane spec wizard with Disintegrate and Archon for as little gold as possible while the auction house still exists. My goal is to have a gear set that will farm Paragon levels on Torment 3 without the Crutch of Lifesteal. I've taken off all of my gear and reset all of my Paragon points to make this challenge as fair as possible. So let's check the auction house and see if the challenge is doable. The most important part for the construction of a gear set is to set realistic expectations for your gear and knowing what numbers will satisfy your needs. We'll start with the most important part of every build and that is of course the weapon. I set my search to two-handers. As I mentioned we're building a disintegrate wizard and channeling spells benefit from low attack speeds because they deplete your resource pool slower. I require a socket and 1200 life on hit. Since we can no longer search by lifesteal and that stat is overpriced and going extinct anyway, we might as well ditch it right now. You'll see that it still works. And what do we get? A sledge of Askelang. Any two-hander with over 1100 DPS will do the job, but this one sweetens the deal with some additional movement speed, which is just lovely. So let's get one for 150k gold. For helms, since helms can roll a lot of intelligence, I set a requirement for wizard hats with 300 int, 5 crit chance and 4 arcane power on crit, since we won't get arcane power on crit on any other pieces. We're not gonna use Chantotu sets, none of the popular legacy set pieces. We won't need much arcane power on crit anyway, but at least a little bit, like 4, will suit our needs. And what do we get? A rare hat with nearly 330 intelligence, 5.5 crit chance, 4 arcane power on crit and 10 max arcane power bonus, which by the way is great since it will negate our energy armor drawbacks. So let's get that for 300k gold. Our bracer requirements will be 200 int, 200 vit and 5 crit chance. Finding these three stats will be easy enough, however, you'll need to browse a few pages until you get to a stat we can't search for. And that is bonus damage to arcane skills. I found a great one for 150k gold on page 5, so let's buy this one. Gloves spiked in price, so we will have to play a little trick here. I want about 200 intelligence on them, but I'll set the requirement a bit lower, and about 50 ORS, and I'll lower this requirement a bit low as well. The idea is that desirable even numbers like 50, 150, 200, etc. are priced higher than 40 something, 140 something and 190 something. My hard requirements however will be 6 crit chance and 20 crit damage. And this is what we got. For our first ring we'll set the requirements to 100 intelligence and 4.5 crit chance. What we got was an extremely cheap Litany of the Undaunted, which is a nice EHP boost, but really, most rings with these stats will do the job. For our second ring, we'll get a Legacy Zunimasa's Pox, setting the requirements to 100 intelligence, 60 all resistance and 30 crit damage. We get one for 300k gold. Amulets have also spiked in price, but since we did quite well with being cheap so far, I'm willing to splurge a bit here. I'll set my requirements to 100 intelligence, 6 crit chance and 40 crit damage. What we got here is a very lucky find, but even if you can't find a similar one, try to stick with the requirements and anything close to them will do the job. Our last DPS gear piece will be the boots. Now you might wonder how come boots are a DPS piece if they can't roll critical hit chance or critical hit damage. Well, with the addition of Loot 2.0, Boots can now roll specific skill bonuses, and one of them is Percentage Bonus to Disintegrate, which is just amazing for this build. Similarly to the Bracers, you might have to flip through a few pages until you find one, but set your requirements to 200 int, 200 vitality, 12 movement speed and start looking. I found one on just page 2. Now to complement our Zunimasa Pox with a nice Zunimasa Marrow for the 2-piece bonus. Set your requirements to 130 intelligence and 100 vitality. If nothing decent pops up at this price range, do the trick with the slightly lowering of the stats and for example to 90 vitality. Fortunately for me, I didn't have that issue and I got a great piece for 450k. 
shoulders will offer us a massive toughness boost for a very reasonable price. I set my requirements to 200 intelligence, 200 vitality and 60 all resistance. Just look at how cheap all of these are. A little trick you can do is to flip through the pages and see if there is a reasonably priced shoulder piece with a percentage bonus to familiar damage, since the build uses familiar. I got one here at the bottom of the page, so I'll get that. Pants will be a pure toughness boost since we no longer desire the attack speed from the legacy Ina Pants. I set my requirements to 130 intelligence, 130 vitality, 30 all resistance and 2 sockets. I got a super lucky find at the top of the page, but really, any of these will do just fine as well. The belt is our last piece and we'll go full toughness here as well. You can set it to crazy high values, over 200 intelligence, over 200 vitality, over 70 all resistance for dirt cheap prices, simply because good toughness belts are easy to find and easy to craft. As you can see, I got this beauty for 250k gold. All that was left were the gems and I got 5 flawless square topazes to fill my chest and pants and a single star emerald to fill my weapon. The total price of the gems was 800k gold. These are the final stats for the gear set. And this is the build we are going to use. Now let's buff up and test it in action. The basic combo of the build against trash enemies is to look for big packs of them, teleport in, dealing damage and stunning them with the Calamity Rune, and then start melting with Disintegrate. Once the Calamity stun runs out, step a few steps back and continue with Disintegrating. The Temporal Flux passive will kick in, slowing your enemies down as they die before they even reach you. Against Elites, activate your Archon and let the laser do its business. Try to position safely and if they get close, activate the explosion ability of the Archon for some additional damage. That was all for the challenge. If you want to make a similar build, you still have 3 days of active auction housing. Keep in mind that sellers are very likely to reduce prices by the day as they hope to sell as much as possible before the shutdown. This might net you a very nice gear set for a reasonable price and you'll have a nice week of farming before the release of Reaper of Souls. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, I hope you will subscribe to my daily videos about Diablo and I also hope to see you on my stream on Twitch TV slash the dead said. I will be broadcasting daily once Reaper of Souls comes out, so see you there as well.